What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. Another Friday, another episode of Why Are We Bullish? Uh, very excited to have everybody on this Friday. Uh, a couple newcomers to the show and a returning guest. Uh, I hope all of you have been having a great week. This should be a good one. Um, I was away last week in Nashville uh, for an event with the Human Rights Foundation at Bitcoin Park, and it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit today, but uh, uh, it was a good time, but I'm glad to be back. Glad to be uh, live with everybody. Of course, uh, if you haven't already, um, give this a share. But uh, before I talk about that, this is live. Anything can happen. So um, in the instance that it does, I defer to my friend Bill here. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. If you have not already, please do like, subscribe, share. All those things, they really help a ton getting this show in front of more eyeballs. That little like button, it's just right down below there. If you tap it, really does help a lot. Anyways, guys, I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. HODL THE BITCOIN Before we dive in, let's take a look at where we are in the market right now. This is timechaincalendar.com. We're sitting at $26,592 per coin. A single US dollar will grab you 3,761 sats. Uh, in terms of fees, a little bit of a bump lately. We're looking at 48 sats per byte next block. If you're willing to wait a little bit, 16 sats per byte, but I uh, wouldn't count on that. Uh, and in terms of Bitcoin mined, 19.49 million of them have been mined. That's 92.82% of the entire supply. Shout out to sponsors of the show, hodlhodl.com. If you're stacking sats and you have some priorities in mind like peer-to-peer -peer trading, instant self-custody, no KYC, you can get it all here. Sign up with nothing more than an email address, choose your currency, payment method, and amount, and start browsing offers immediately. You can also check out their peer-to-peer -peer lending in which nothing is ever rehypothecated. Links are down below. And of course, when you do get some non-KYC sats, you're gonna wanna secure it with some good hardware. CoinKite has you covered. The cold card Mark IV is my go-to hardware wallet, has been for a long time. I've got all their other goodies too, tap, signer, sats card, block, clock, open dimes. Uh, coming soon, cold card Q1. Uh, so if you want to reserve that or pick up anything else I mentioned, head over to coinkite.com. You can use code BTC Sessions for 5% off everything in the store. Backups, of course, are important. Uh, this week I dropped a tutorial on the CDOR. This is a steel backup to protect your seed from the elements, fire, water, corrosion, all of that. And it is robust as hell. Um, they've got a starter set that comes with everything. Uh, it's pretty crazy, actually. Giant mallet and stamps and and uh, positioner and everything. And uh, anyways, you can check out the video on it. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. And um, and uh, yeah, I feel pretty confident storing my seeds with it. So you can check them out, seedor.io. There's links down below, depending on your jurisdiction, where you can pick it up. Uh, so you don't have to pay exorbitant amounts for shipping. Um, Couple last ones, nunchuck.io has you covered with multi-sig, assisted multi-sig with their Honey Badger. Basically, you set it up on your phone. It walks you through the entire thing. You can use a ton of different options for hardware like Tab Signer, Cold Card, and plenty of others. At the end of all of that, you have a multi-sig in which Nunchuck holds one key and you hold the rest. It has baked in inheritance planning, so your sats get to your next of kin if anything should happen. And the whole thing is no KYC. So that has you fully set up and ready to go. Check them out. Uh, I've done a tutorial on that as well. And last shout out of the day to Start9, your sovereign computing solution where you can use plug and play devices to run your entire Bitcoin stack like Core, Lightning, uh, mempool.space. You can host your data, files, passwords, photos, all of that. And they've got everything from entry level up to what I'm running, which is the Start9 server pure. Uh, anyways, guys, I'm going to stop my ranting here. You can check them out at start9.com. But in the meantime, let's get our guests in uh, and get rolling. So I want to welcome to the show, I want to welcome Ella and Arsh and Mick. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, very glad to have you. I think um, some introductions are in order for those that are watching that may not be familiar. So 
Uh, I'll toss it over to Ella first. Ella, do you want to give yourself a little intro, let people know who you are? Absolutely. First, thanks, Ben, so much for having me on. Um, my name is Ella Huff, and I am a junior in college, but the real reason I'm here is because I'm a project lead at Generation Bitcoin, um, along with Arsh, where essentially our mission is to help educate Gen Z about Bitcoin and then also help them eventually work in Bitcoin. Uh, so not just learn about it, but really become innovators in this space as well. That's awesome. I love to hear. I, I think um, we definitely need to put time into educating as many young people in and around Bitcoin as possible. So uh, noble cause. I'm, I'm happy that you're on it. Awesome. Um, Arsh, I'll toss it down to you. Can you give yourself a little intro? Definitely. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Ben. Um, as Ella mentioned, I'm the co-founder of Generation Bitcoin. Um, and I also work at the Human Rights Foundation, where I work on our financial freedom program. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I first met you, what, in uh, Pacific Bitcoin last year, I think. Is that right? Briefly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then we've since seen each other at a, a handful of HRF events, which is awesome. So uh, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, it, I, I guess it's been a long time coming. So uh, yeah, thanks for joining me, man. <laughs> and uh, Mick, First, uh, this is your second time on the show. Last time was an epic one. I'm glad to have you back. Can you give yourself a little intro for those unfamiliar? Yeah, of course. So good to be back. Can you hear me all right? Yep. I got you loud and clear. Uh, yeah. So I'm Mick, Metamic, uh, co-founder and CEO of Geyser.fund. It's a platform for creators to launch their projects or ideas and, and uh, fundraise through their community. Um, I believe you've been utilized it, so I uh, would love to also hear at some point <laughs> awesome awesome well uh, i'm glad to have you back man and um yeah so so this should be a good chat uh we're gonna just dive right into it um first those unfamiliar with the show uh format's pretty simple all of us come with a, a reason for being bullish something that we're excited about in and around the bitcoin space it can be really anything that that currently has our interest uh but the role of the run of the show is effectively uh, somebody's going to drop a reason why they're bullish. Uh, that's their chance to rant and, and get uh, whatever they have in their mind uh, off of their chest. And then number two, we're all going to together riff on that reason, chat, figure out what little rabbit holes we want to go down. And then number three, we're going to rotate until everybody has a turn. So really simple reason, riff, rotate all the way through. So I'm going to get us started today and... Um, with my reason for being bullish and very broadly, I guess I could say um, the Bitcoin builders have me bullish on, uh, on, on the projects and the amazing um, apps and services that uh, they are busy creating. But I wanted to uh, shine a spotlight on somebody that I've known for a long time who seems to have pumped out, like just low key pumped out a whole bunch of stuff in the past little bit that uh, has kind of blown me away. And some of it hasn't, has not even been fully public yet. So, um, but I mean, it's not meant to be a, a secret, but I, I can talk about it a little bit here because the talk wasn't televised. So I want to give a shout out to uh, Francis Pouliot and what he's doing with bull Bitcoin. Um so anybody that doesn't know bull Bitcoin or, or maybe doesn't know specifically what what they do, um, I worked I worked with Francis at bull Bitcoin for a year, year and a half or so. Um, and and effectively what it is, is, uh, you know, it was one of the first Bitcoin only um, exchanges that existed. Um, so he, he was one of the first to say, no, 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 we're, we're not going to be dealing with any of the, the other riffraff that's been happening. We're just going to focus on Bitcoin. Um, but prior to it be being called bull Bitcoin, it was called bills, B Y L L S. And effectively it allows anybody in Canada at the time, uh, to pay any bill that they wanted. They were able to, uh, plug in to um, the payment rails in in Canada. Um, and in Canada, there's basically like a single like tell pay is is kind of responsible for pretty much any bill you would pay. So they were able to plug into that and then provide a platform where 
uh, you could say, hey, this is my account for this particular bill. Um, and I'd like to pay this amount on it. And they would just say, OK, here's a Bitcoin QR code, scan it and pay that amount and we'll handle the rest. And your bill is paid within 24 to 48 hours, um, which was already wild. But then he went and he did all this stuff like adding lightning, adding liquid, adding all of these different things. The whole thing, if you're buying Bitcoin from them, is is non KYC uh, in in certain instances, if you want it to be. Um, he also was the first exchange to implement CoinJoin as a privacy feature anytime you you send coins to them. So in this post here, he said, uh, Bull Bitcoin started as the world's first uh, Bitcoin bill payment business. Ten years later, thousands of Canadians use their services each month for everyday payments, privacy focused, extreme speed, instant exchange rates, uh, lightning enabled. Um, so he goes on to say, you pay a credit card bill on chain, no KYC. Next day, the payment appears on your statement with no mention of Bitcoin. You try chain analysis on your transaction, but it disappeared into a coin join or pay with lightning, not even a transaction ID. <laughs> and then he says the American slash European mind cannot comprehend this because it's just it's not it's not available in other places. So, you know, first off, hats off to for that. But he also dropped uh, this bomb earlier um, in the month, which is is being able to buy. Bitcoin with cash through any post office in all of Canada, which is crazy. Like you can, you can walk in with like up to a thousand bucks um, per transaction and up to $10,000 a week and just go and, and you literally open up uh, an app on your phone and there's like a QR code and the person at Canada post doesn't need to know at all what it is. They just scan it like a regular product. And then it'll say on their screen, how much does this person want to deposit? And you just, you tell them how much and you give them cash. And then you've got money in your account. For me, it was like 10 or 15 minutes later. Um, they never hold Bitcoin for you. So the moment that those dollars are allocated to your account, uh, when you hit buy Bitcoin, you must provide a Bitcoin address. And then it's after that, it's in your custody minutes later. So that's the other bomb that he dropped. And then... Just the other day, all of a sudden, because, uh, you know, Francis is in Costa Rica now, all of a sudden it, it, it just got leaked. And then he was like, I guess I better write a blog post. Uh, Bull Bitcoin is now all over Costa Rica and you can just go anywhere. And they've integrated with this kind of national payment through the cell phone kind of thing. And all you need to do to send somebody money in in the native currency in, in Costa Rica is you use bull Bitcoin, you type in the person's mobile number, um, and then you send a lightning payment. And that person will get uh, uh, Costa Rican Colonas into their account, like in in seconds. It's, it's completely wild. Um, and then beyond this, the other thing that I want to give a tip of the hat to was he did a talk at the Canadian Bitcoin conference talking about kind of the infrastructure he wants to build around a mobile Bitcoin app for bull Bitcoin, which would effectively be the same rails that they have for funding an account, but never having um, custody of the Bitcoin. Because when you hit the buy Bitcoin button, it would just show up as a Bitcoin balance in the app, but the app is actually self custody, but it's kind of blurring those lines because the dollars are in, in the custody of, of bull Bitcoin, but the second you hit buy, it sends an actual on-chain or lightning transaction to the wallet that resides within the app. And it's actually yours. And on top of that, you can import hardware wallets and send directly to that. So like, it's all just in one and you're kind of basically directly onboarding people to self custody without them, you know, they'll obviously guide them, but without them fully, knowing they're just suddenly self-custodying. Um, yeah. So anyways, long and the short of it is, I know this is a long rant, but like Francis is just one example of, of the, the, the passion and hard work that are going into Bitcoin apps and, and resources and, and hardware everywhere. And, um, 
if this is the kind of work ethic and and the kind of um, head down, let's get this stuff done mentality that is happening across the Bitcoin ecosystem, then holy hell, I can only imagine what this looks like in 10 years. So um, I guess I'll, I'll kind of wrap it there, but I'm just going to kind of generally open it up to you guys and, and, and say, where do you feel we're at in terms of the Bitcoin builders that are out there? Um, are you excited the direction that we're going? And, and maybe as a, a secondary question is, what areas do you think need some more attention in this kind of TLC to, to help them along? So whoever wants to jump in with your general thoughts, I'm, I'm happy to take them. I might quickly hop in first because I think Arsh and Nick are going to have kind of more to say on this subject with the guys are fun. Um, but so my initial thoughts on this is so often in my day, people tell me, you know, Ellen, nothing happens in Bitcoin. Like there's no developments. It's, it's kind of stagnant. And this is just, you know, even further proof that no, there actually is a lot happening, you know, all the time, everywhere. Um, so I think that's very exciting. Um, and some takeaways from Nashville, people were saying, we have to get people to start using Bitcoin, not just kind of keeping it like stationary. Um, so these apps are helping with that. And then also the UI UX aspect, like how do we just make this easier for people? And so it sounds like he's clearly trying to do that and think about that. Um, so I guess those are my two cents and, and I'll hand it over to Arsh and Nick to kind of expand. Awesome. Yeah, so I think, I think from like a funding perspective, um especially like there was i mean there was a point in time where a lot of you know bitcoin and its app ecosystems were not as easy to use right and it's it, we're still like nowhere um close to being fully usable i feel like but mm -hmm. you know like i mean the developments that we've seen with um a lot of open source you know payment processors a lot of uh wallets and, and stuff like that like it's definitely um, advanced to the point. So definitely bullish on um, Bitcoin builders. Um, I feel like there's more and more projects that are, you know, coming out of the space uh, that are, that are really important to kind of keep an eye on. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Yep. Nick, yeah. 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 Great, great points here. Uh, I think my, my thought, my first thought well, immediately actually was, um, and I saw him on the chat here was the meme that Ye yellow always talks about, which was guys, let's build, right? Let's build. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's just, it's hilarious. Yeah. It's uh, just, um, just, you have to just say that you're building, even if you're not building, you just, yeah, let's just build guys. <laughs> anyway. Um, the other thought was, uh, the announcement of, of, Coinbase saying that they're going to integrate with Lightning. I think mm -hmm. uh, that's a very interesting, you know, uh, development. Mainly because I think other the foundation, the, the business model changes, right? It goes from being we make money by having people trade uh, crypto, right, to mm -hmm. we make money by having people spend Bitcoin on Lightning. Yeah. Right, so this all of a sudden creates a, a new in, uh, new set of incentives for Coinbase to actually enable Bitcoin adoption at merchants, at uh, consumer retails, and so um, it, 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 it's big, right? It's big from from that perspective. Um, obviously, you know we know their history. We know we can't really trust them, uh, but uh, it's good for Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, and then I would probably just say just that you know uh, guys are being part of it you have you know this this in, i mean great protocols on top of bitcoin and, and lightning that have been that have been built and you have these infrastructural um uh builders you know great great companies like obdc pay server like voltage that help to kind of really lay out the foundations for them pe people and platforms like like a geyser uh, but there are many more you know there's fountain there is um uh wave lake and stacker news all these uh, you um, tools uh, like Bitcoin and Lightning uh, tools that actually allow you to use Bitcoin not just to buy and hold, but mm -hmm. to actually use Bitcoin in the online economy while you're listening to podcasts and so forth. So, so that's uh, something I'm really hopeful for and bullish on. But also, I'd say that the the final thing is probably just the development of Noster and um, 
what's particularly exciting is just that it makes it so much easier for 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 builders to build mm -hmm. you know um just because you don't have to run a um a back end server or connect to google cloud you can just build an application that sits on top of a really directly and um and build a tool on top of that and so just the ease of of building uh will result to just so many so many more tools, so many more applications. Um, and, uh, and that's really, really exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, and yeah, you're right. The, um, in particular, the stuff happening on Nostra, I, I can't keep up. <laughs> there's, there's, there's so many, uh, like, I have no idea where to start. I feel like, I think I've done, I think I've done three different Nostra videos and every time I've done a Nostra video, it's like, like the first one I did was near the beginning of the year. And it was hideously out of date, like three months later, like all of the interfaces, everything was just like so completely different. And there were so many more tools that were easier to use that I had to make another one. And like it, now even that is like, you, you know, the stuff you can do and like the, how it looks and everything is, is so different that, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild how, how fast those things move, but, um, you know, kudos to everybody that's putting in the work for it yeah it's amazing um so so i want to um i i don't want to spend too much time on on my topic here uh but i do want to get to your guys topic so um I'll, I'll kind of put a bow on this one but anyways uh francis you're doing a killer job and the rest of the builders out there uh keep it coming and uh i'll have plenty of material to cover in videos um but we're gonna do a rotation here um, and so I'm going to actually toss it to Ella first and I'll cue you up with the simple question. Why are you <laughs> bullish? Thanks, man. Okay. So I'll preface this with, this is definitely going to fall into the rant, a little unformed category. Um, so I'm, I'm going to talk through it, bear with me. Um, and then hopefully I can go back and refine it. But I, so about a year ago, I wrote a piece mag and question is bitcoin the key to the universe and i said yes um but i don't think until like maybe last week or the week or until the michael dunworth um podcast came out on peter mccormick where his question was basically can bitcoin help us solve the unsolvable problems i wasn't i didn't know i could be more bullish on my answer that the answer is yes. Um, so, okay, so this is the rabbit hole that um, my brain is kind of down at the moment. Um, but if I had to say it succinctly, I would say that I'm bullish on Bitcoin because it gives us the wisdom and the insight to kind of solve the unsolvable problems and actually is the key to the universe. And I'll kind of explain that. Um, so for the first part, I think Bitcoin just generally, like the values it has, it allows us to take more responsibility for ourselves to start asked questions. It's kind of like a catalyst almost for first principles thinking. Um, and not just kind of like maybe throw in the towel or kind of give up some of our agency on what is right or what is wrong or what opinions we have. Um, so I think just the fact that it kind of reinvigorates the spark in us to like ask questions um, and think differently is a very strong case for being bullish. Um, but then to, to tie, bring it back a little bit to what Michael Dunworth was saying, um, and, and I highly recommend people go and watch this podcast. Um, I've watched it a couple times since. Um, but it, Bitcoin kind of allows us to solve the hardest problems we have out there because it kind of unifies everything through its emphasis on numbers, specifically like prime numbers and energy. So kind of at the end of the day, we hear all the time, Bitcoin is just math. Um, Bitcoin is just numbers. And so that's kind of what I had in my article. But um, OK, so this is this is where it's it's going to go a little off, not as concise here. But basically, there's this idea almost of like bridge laws. Um, and we have, you know, biology, chemistry, physics, thermodynamics, all the different types of sciences. And there's an idea of, you know, what bridge laws, how do all of these different fields talk to each other? Um, like what is the common threads almost through them? And numbers is kind of what he, one of the things he says is numbers are like our purest 
form to transmit meaning. Like language can get a little abstract, especially when you're switching to different types of languages. Um, but Bitcoin, because it's based on numbers and on energy, I think it allows us to connect a lot of different dots and fields um, and kind of reduce friction as we think about different problems. And you know, what do we know in one field that we don't know in another field? Um, so it helps us connect dots. It also helps us like collect them because it's just making us be more curious, making us ask more questions. Um, and then I think maybe the final thing I'll, I'll say in this is he also made the point that we've been in kind of the information age, but we're starting to go into the energy age. And so Bitcoin, we know it's you know created and secured by energy. Like Bitcoin is the ultimate energy thing. Um, you know, if we're going into the energy age also, um, that's very interesting. Um, and let's see, what else was I thinking about this? So yeah, basically, Bitcoin's the key to the universe because it helps us solve these problems that propel us forwards, problems maybe we don't even know yet, um, literally because it's based on numbers, prime numbers, because it's created and secured by energy. Um, and then I think because it allows us, maybe most critically, to just adopt a low time preference, to actually stick with the hard problems and solve them. Um, so there's there's my rant. There's kind of like the rabbit hole my brain is down. Uh, but I just, I find that all incredibly fascinating and very hopeful for the future and, and where the future is going. I love that. I, I <laughs> it, it's, I, I think, I think, I, I, what I like about it is it's um, it's it's kind of a, a different way of of thinking of the whole um, idea that Bitcoin is is because it's based on numbers it's it's kind of this distilled form of of truth and we've we've kind of lost that like um, you know when when something as fundamental as the way that we kind of communicate our values like you know you, yeah. you you pour your blood sweat and tears into going to a job every day and then you earn a money that you then put into action and and you expect some of those values to kind of be reflected back at you by society because you, you put all this work in um but then there's somebody behind the curtain that can press a button and undo vast amounts of the work that you've done and all of society's done. And I, I think that's maybe a reason for a lot of the um, discontent that we see in society. So getting back to a more truthful value communication layer um, can kind of propel us forward as, as a, as a people, as a society. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> and yeah, on the language topic, I guess this was totally like another tangent article I wrote. Uh, like I don't even think anyone's read it um, but basically kind of how language only gets us so far and even like we're all speaking English right now but like Ben you just nodded to kind of mm -hmm. signal that you were hearing what I was saying mm -hmm. like we still lose so much meaning even when we're speaking the same language and I think to your point like Bitcoin just gives us mm -hmm. the values that even if it's kind of ambiguous like we know the values of you know I, I respect what you're trying to do inclusion empathy um, you know, private property rights, liberty, peace, like it kind of gets the core values across and it allows us to speak to like all 8 billion people because mm -hmm. Bitcoin is for everyone and we all will interpret differently, speak different languages. But just to your point about getting values across in language, I think that is very powerful and kind of untapped at the moment in Bitcoin. And it, you know, might take another century, um, but it's just very interesting to think about. That's awesome. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll toss it down to uh, the other gentleman if you guys <laughs> want to dive in, comment, question, whatever, whatever you feel. Sure. Happy to. Uh, I, I mean, all this talk of languages and uh, and universal languages uh, reminding me a lot of the, the Tower of Babel uh, episode and, and the Bible, right? Where probably you guys all know it, but there's worth it's worth, I think, reminding ourselves of the of that quote where I have it here, uh, where the world spoke one language and had a common form of speech. And as people journeyed eastward, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there, blah, blah, blah. They wanted to build the Tower of Babel, but then the Lord came down and said, if they have begun to do this, and as one people speaking the same language, then nothing they devise will be beyond them. 
come, <laughs> come let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand one, one another's speech. And so the Lord scattered them from there over the face of the earth and they stopped building the city. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, is God going to come down to us and uh, divide us now that we've reconnected the world in a single language? <laughs> As I'm again, communication is so so integral to um coordination of people towards a common goal right like as, as soon as you lose that so i mean um <laughs> we're getting cosmic here but there's that that idea of of the great filter um like if if you know there the idea is the the universe is so vast that we, we should have seen aliens already I don't know if I count the paper mache that were just revealed in 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 Mexico as, as aliens, but uh, but nonetheless, um, the idea is that there could be a great filter, some sort of limiting aspect, um, or or some sort of difficult thing to get past that um, uh, may be preventing other civilizations from reaching us, and uh, and if that's true, then either we're the first ones to have passed it or we have yet to encounter it. And so there's been, I've had discussions where people were, were saying to, to this kind of tune is, is Bitcoin um, the great filter? Is, is that the, the coordination and communication layer necessary to bind us enough as, as a species to, to move forward and transcend where we're at right now? Um, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Anyways, Arsh, sorry to queue you up with uh, some <laughs> crazy cosmic thing, but <laughs> um, no, I just I just got a reminder that I have to go reread that article. There was a lot there, Ella. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean no no particular thoughts, but but yeah, great great article. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice that kind of ideas resurface themselves. Like, I don't know, oh, it's like working like back in the subconscious, but I, you don't need to read my article again. I would say, just watch, just watch the podcast. Michael does a much better job than me. Um, but yeah, it's just fascinating to think about. Yeah. When you think of kind of the, uh, the consequences of, of not having, um, kind of a, a or, or moving away from a universal value of language uh, um, language of value rather like we we had a we had a gold standard but that was it was easy to pervert that um, by by having it represented in, in various forms and and the the physicality was its shortcoming but you know do you feel like we 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 lost things in that transition to what we've had for the past, I mean, 50, maybe more years. Do you feel like, uh, you know, what, what happens when we get away from that, that mutual understanding? Yeah. I, so I think I kind of have to give Jimmy song credit for this idea that I'll share, but I guess he talks a lot about like, what are the values in our money? Kind of like moral money versus immoral money. And I think the money that we have now, fiat, is just very immoral money and kind of value and meaning corrupting money. And I think Bitcoin is a much more moral money, more um, kind of pure element to just transact value or, um, you know, what, because essentially we're just trying to connect values or needs. Or and I think Bitcoin is just a much pure um kind of catalyst or, or kind of embodiment of that. So I hope that kind of answers your question, but I definitely think the money that we live with now kind of just embeds us with, or, or just kind of corrupts our ability to transact in the most kind of ethical, pure way. Yeah. Um, Nick, I, I want to toss one more thing your way since, since, since you went the biblical route. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm I'm not a religious person myself, but um, I I think through Bitcoin I've kind of come to have a, a greater appreciation of of people that are religious because of uh, some of the 
ethical alignment. And I, I didn't quite understand this, um, this idea of religion paired with Bitcoin, other than the fact that we're Bitcoiners and we're all in a cult, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I didn't under, you know, I didn't understand, um, kind of where, where this draw came, um, because we have books again, like Jimmy song, um, thank God for Bitcoin, um, and a number of others <laughs> wrote that with him, but, um, do you kind of see those those parallels like uh, in, in terms of morals, like why those those two kind of um, sets of ideals come together? You only ask easy questions, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Uh, I mean, where, where do I stand in this? First of all, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like to entertain. I like to learn from history. I'm not necessarily a religious uh, person mm -hmm. myself either, but uh, I do I do think there's a lot of uh, wisdom and maybe even historical references that we can draw upon um, that match with what we know, what science is uh, getting to today. So, you know, just looking at the history of our, hum our civiliza civilization and uh, how it, it um, geological... Uh, in archaeological history seem to map a lot with some of those early historical references um, um, but uh, so so where that where that then maps out with Bitcoin is um, it's, it's really it's, it's really a personal thing I, I, I think uh, you know I think it, I've seen I've seen Bitcoiners go both routes you know see Bitcoiners go actually there is there is no there is no God Um that's just uh, a type of God is just a type of, um, you know, like, again, fiat, like the word fiat, right, comes from decree, right? And some way God is decreeing. Um, and uh, and what if we were to not accept that? And then I've seen uh, other Bitcoiners just, you know, go down the, you know, God, uh, quote, Christian uh, thing. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I, um, I think... Uh, and to that, you know, uh, I think what's important is that it elicits uh, different experiences that people can learn, uh, different perspectives, I would say. But uh, I, I guess what's important is that, and actually, I have written an article about this. Uh, it's called uh, um, Bitcoin as, um, uh, as, div as a Divinity, which is basically a way of saying, in trying to actually reject seeing Bitcoin as a religion and uh, trying to actually warn of the dangers of that, but at the same time acknowledging that there is something. If you look at the word uh, divinity and what you know how how to define uh, something divine, it's something basically that cannot be understood, uh, that cannot that is beyond comprehension. And so, if you look at the history, we've always assigned. Uh, because actually my background my background is in anthropology so I was fascinated with this you know idea that you know back in time people would ascribe uh, sanctity and <clears throat> and um, uh, divinities to certain aspects of their lives that were uh, crucial but they didn't necessarily understand so they would you know assign divinity to to everything right there was, they would ascribe divinity to the sun and to the seasons and to the um and, and sacredness to these things because they were because they relied on them and also didn't fully uh, uh, understand them and so um where um so again there and and also and and therefore what it does is that it creates a tradition uh a ritual a cultural ritual for respect respecting that thing right respecting you know if you're in ancient egypt yeah the the, the sun and the and the, the river and the cats for the matter because they they killed pests and so mm -hmm. you then go about there's you know religion becomes uh essentially rituals that help the that has a function a cultural a cultural function to help you know humanity thrive so you don't have to read the entire uh bible but you um but you have to you know through culture and religion that you know cats are good because they kill the pests <laughs> um i don't know this is a bit of it's a functional fun functionalist school of thinking 
um, and it's not always correct, but I think, I think in, from this sense, I think that religion is a, a net positive mm -hmm. for humanity um, and, and, and a good thing. Um, but we also have to question our, our masters, right? Like the biblical mm -hmm. stories say, you know, God did divide us up into having different languages for some mm -hmm. reasons. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, the answer is, I don't know. I'm just, uh, yeah, <laughs> learning, Hope, how, learn, hoping to learn from you guys. What do you guys yeah. think? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I want to, I want to toss it to Arsh to get any, um, any last thoughts on this. I just, I just wanted to. I guess the one thing that I was going to say in and around this is, um, you know, historically, I I definitely understand religion was was a a a wonderful way to get people to um, uh, again to synergize and, and work towards a common goal because they 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 were looking for not just for themselves but for their children and and for their grandchildren and and for you know, generations to come. And so they would build these amazing things that maybe they wouldn't see come to fruition even within their lifetimes, but they would put in the work to, um, you know, to have something for future generations to enjoy. And we kind of got away with that when, once the, uh, away from that, once the money broke. Um, but I, I think that the interesting part about Bitcoin is, is you're seeing, such a diverse group of people um, come to it, right? Yeah, you know, you had the 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 early stages of kind of like the the cypherpunk and then libertarian kind of groups come to it, and then we've kind of had like the um, more, I guess, like traditional, I, I suppose, right wing kind of uh, you know right leaning people come to it. We now got a whole sect of like progressive Bitcoiners coming uh, to the space. Um, you know, we've got human rights advocates and, and political dissidents, and we've got all of these different things all coming to Bitcoin. So it, it kind of leads me to believe as, as diverse as the number of opinions are in Bitcoin, we've all settled on the, the idea that Bitcoin is a, a better way to organize than what we've currently got. And it may be as or more powerful than some of these other institutions that we've had in the past. It might actually finally bring these, these disparate groups together so we can work together as a society. But I mean, Arsh, you, you are, are, you know, you're, you're busy working with, with various types of people from around the globe. Um, using bitcoin and and you know a lot of those people are very very different different walks of life do you think that bitcoin is kind of taking us to a place where um all of us can can work together more efficiently and and despite our differences yeah i mean even even going back to politics right like i think bitcoin being a form of apolitical money um to where it doesn't really matter you know your your politics or you know how how you identify on like the political scale um a, a lot of people you know who who we work with they're kind of all over the world they're on different political scales uh but we can all agree about bitcoin so mm -hmm. i think you know that's very powerful mm -hmm. yeah yeah i would i would agree well i mean and we'll we'll get to see it play out in in the coming years and uh um, yeah, you've got, you've got kind of people from, from all over the place and all over the political spectrum coming together, which is a unique thing to see. So, um, awesome. Uh, all right. Follow up on, on yeah. that though, because what you said there, uh, uh, Ben also reminded me that that's the problem, right? Is that when you have group of, group of people forming together and right, you, maybe you have an original point of conversion of, you know, um, of, of strong, strong belief in something. Um, what we see in history, though, is that that too gets co-opted, right? And then it becomes a religion, and then it becomes mandation, and mm -hmm. then it just becomes a way, it just becomes abused mm -hmm. uh, by, by certain people in power to, to take yeah. it over. Um, and so it's, uh, that's uh, the idea of seeing Bitcoin as, uh, it might be good, to, you, could, you could see it, you could argue that, you know, see Bitcoin as divine, but also don't create a, a cult around mm -hmm. it or religion, because 
it'll get co-opted. And in any yeah. case, it's something that, um, um, yeah, don't don't create any kind of institutions around it. Like you know, we've seen with uh, with all sorts of relig religions being co-opted in the end. Yeah, do we uh, do we get to a point where um, somebody uses the wrong app and uh, they're ousted from society? <laughs> <laughs> Custodial Bitcoin, ah, oh, exorcism. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, you 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 get kicked out. We're gonna we're gonna close you off from the walled city. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, no admittance to the citadel. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess we'll I guess we'll see. But <laughs> no vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Did you just ingest something that wasn't steak? Uh, not allowed. Um, <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So uh, I, again, Ella, I, I love the topic. I think it's super interesting. Okay. And um, yeah, well, well, I, I mean, we'll see over our lifetimes kind of how it starts to play out, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, with that, I'm. Uh, I guess we'll we'll uh, put a pin in this one and and we'll move on and do a rotation again. And so I'm going to uh, Arsh. I'm going to toss it down to you. And uh, again, same question coming your way. Why are you bullish? Yeah, um, I think recently it's been physical spaces mm -hmm. uh, that make me very bullish. And you know, you, you guys already know where I'm going with this. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think the national event that we had last week was um, an amazing reminder that when people with the same or similar ideology um, and with the same mission come together um, people from all different walks of life, people from all around the world. Um, so, I mean, we have this event, um, you know, we co we co-hosted it with Bitcoin park um, and Bitcoin park does an event called grassroots every year where they bring together um you know, BitDevs organizers from all across the states, uh, Bitcoin community organizers, etc. Um, so we thought to do the global version of that um, called the Global Bitcoin Summit. So basically, what ended up happening is we invited close to 100, you know, activists, entrepreneurs, uh, developers, educators from all around the world um, from 56 different countries. Um, so every continent besides Antarctica. <laughs> um, and it was, it was really cool because we got to spend, you know, two, three days together um, and got to share ideas um, about, about different topics in Bitcoin. So it's, it's, it's always refreshing because when you see people online or when you see people um, not very often and when you, you know, come together in a room, you can kind of form new ideas and new initiatives um, to help get Bitcoin to the people who need it the most. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it was there something that stood out for you? Like, it, it, like, did you have a favorite part of, of the weekend or a favorite presentation or, or something that happened that, that you really liked? Yeah. I mean, so like the way that we formatted it was, you know, there was people coming off, you know, planes and they, they spent 30 plus hours um, getting to Nashville, right? So we didn't want to bore them with, you know, just a bunch of talks and panels. Um, so the whole day w was meant to be very interactive um, to the point where we only had like one panel um, mm -hmm. per day, but instead do lightning presentations, which, you know, which, which you did one of um, on, on education. Um, and do workshops and, and breakouts and stuff like that. So I think, you know, that was really the best part of it. I don't, I don't have a particular um, mm -hmm. favorite, but I, I, I really did enjoy the format that we chose to do it. In. I, I know you had a particular favorite. Um, and I wanted to pa pass that back to you. Yeah. Um, well, there's, there's a couple, but okay. So um there's a girl named Lisa, uh, uh, nifty, uh, who, who did a session and it's called the Bitcoin LARP, um, LARP, those unfamiliar stands for live action role play. Uh, but it was, it was so well put together. Basically you, you had groups of people, you know, uh, sitting in at little tables and, um, they were effectively 
doing the roles of what a, a Bitcoin node and eventually what a Bitcoin miner would do to relay transactions to and from other nodes in the network. And so you'd have different roles where you'd be, you know, you had your, your, your mempool and you had your, uh, your, your actual blockchain of, of uh, confirmed transactions and, uh, and, and you'd be doing the transaction IDs and nonces and, and all of this stuff. I was, I was relaying information through the gossip network, which were two, two strings of yarn between me and other people at other tables. And anytime we had a transaction or did a transaction, you had to put it on a little, <laughs> put it on a little ring and like you'd write it out and you'd put it on a little ring and then you'd, you'd let it go down the line to the next table. And the other person would have to take it and put it in their mempool and let everybody else know that they've seen this transaction too. And then, you know, then we did like a mining competition and you're just putting in random nonces to try and guess the block and everything. And like, it was, it was wild. And it was such a, such an interesting and informative way of doing it. Also, I learned something there, which I'm ashamed. I did not know how this worked. Um, I didn't know that the way that fees are allocated in any transaction I didn't know that was just merely an omission of of sending that Bitcoin to any particular place. So like when you're doing a transaction, the way you pay fees is you just say, I've got this much Bitcoin in a UTXO and I'm only going to send a portion of it to this address and whatever's left over, it's that's what the miners kind of scoop up in that trend. I, I didn't know that. I had no idea that was how it worked. And that's why the number of Bitcoin that exist is some weird, some weird, like long, super long decimal is because miners can accidentally not scoop up those omitted sats. And so there's been instances where there's been mistakes and it's just like, well, the block has been mined and those sats are just gone forever. And it's just because miners like they make a mistake and they they don't scoop up the omitted uh, sats from a particular transaction. So, anyways, I learned something new. And hats off to Lisa for running a killer session uh, that that taught me a lot. And um, yeah, what an amazing! Uh, she must have put so much work into fine tuning that that whole thing and getting it to work. And I loved the. Um, organized chaos that took place in that room it was it was amazing yeah so i, I didn't actually get to like sit in on that session um mm -hmm. you know because we had a bunch of other tasks and items that we had to do but um lisa actually one of one of the first times that she did that larp was with um generation bitcoin in new york um, mm -hmm. over a year ago um so we had you know probably like like 15 20 people um in, in New York city. And, um, it was a very like interactive way to learn, um, about, about nodes. Um, mm -hmm. I, I told Lisa she should make it into like a game and like try to like oh, yeah. sell it, but she has, I mean, she has so much, so much stuff that she, that she does. I don't, I don't know how she does it. That would be a, that'd be a hell of a strategy. Like that, that'd be an, like, cause obviously there's like, there's a degree of chance, with with the whole mining thing but like what a what a cool way of again just having a group of people in a room and being able to do that and it's again it, it really does help wrap your head around what nodes do what miners are doing and i mean i, I guess i wonder what the goal would be like just to a accumulate the most bitcoin but then you have expenses that you have to pay so you got to send transactions to make sure they go through and they get mined and yeah that's it was it was so unique. So um, I'll definitely you know, partake in that one again. Um, yeah, it was really cool. I don't know. It, um, maybe uh, I'll, I'll talk. Ella, you were there. Did yeah. did you have a, did you have a particular thing over the the weekend there that you really enjoyed that that you had a lot of fun with? Uh, 
Yes. Well, actually, I was initially going to say the same thing as you because I was in the LARP session also. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that was just so cool. Um, and I think good news is she actually is going to produce kits and so that people can then go and buy them. And nice. I'm working with her right now. She is going to be kind of up in where I go to school and she might come and leave that session. So fingers crossed because I think it's, it's just so cool. Um, so I, I loved that. But then I also loved just like all the little moments you couldn't plan for. Like if you're just holding the door open and you look behind to like see who it is and then you can just strike up a conversation or you're, I don't know, just in line at the buffet to get food or you're just walking from one place to the other. Um, So I loved all that because most of the time Bitcoin just exists in the digital, like our Bitcoin community doesn't often get to come together. And so our shit was so special that you and HRF and Bitcoin Park could bring everyone together or or many people together to actually just be in a space and just kind of be in community with each other. So I really loved that. And thank you. Did your, uh, did your eyes gloss over a little bit when we went around the room and everybody stood up and said what, what they they are and what they do? (laughs) Yes. A hundred percent. Um, yeah, all the time. And at, at the dinners that you all planned and, you know, you're just sitting and you sit down and, you know, you look and see who you're sitting across from or you know, who's on the bus with you or yes, yeah. absolutely. The whole time I spe- I felt like kind of like the smallest fish in the pond there. And it was, it was just so yeah. cool. I, I, I had a moment on, I think it was the, the Saturday I was, uh, I was sitting at the hotel, just um, grabbing a, a coffee before heading out somewhere for a meal. And uh, I'm sitting there, and this guy comes up and sits down. And says, hey, Ben, uh, didn't didn't really get to introduce myself, but nice to meet you. It was Julian Assange's brother, and I just about lost my mind because I hadn't really spoken with him before, and I was kind of shy to say anything. Um, but like, what a nice guy! And then just just sitting there be- and like having a casual conversation, being like, "Oh, wow." Um, you, <laughs> your, your your brother is like one of the more impactful like, again like his his grace the headlines of of newspapers everywhere is 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 world renowned and and infamous in some people's eyes um and again to be sitting there with somebody that that um it is is fighting to like free a family member um, from uh, you know basically spending his life in prison for um, you know leaking information about government corruption. It was was wild again, and like that's and Julian Assange is such an early part of Bitcoin history as well with WikiLeaks. Like that was the first major instance of. You know, Satoshi, like the whole hornet's nest quote, like, I fear that uh, the swarm is coming towards us um, to to have that. Like, that was super impactful for me. Just like, I uh, yeah, I, I kind of couldn't believe that I was, you know, <laughs> sitting there chatting with this person. And these are the things that happen at these um, at these events. Uh, and it's 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 a big deal. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mick, I. I I, I, I know you weren't present there, so I feel like I, I don't know, but yeah. Um, yeah, all I can say is I'm jealous, um, <laughs> but it seems like it was awesome and uh, I'll have to check Mick. out this really cool LARPing uh, thing. Yeah. yeah Mick, it, Mick you, you definitely strive to be there next year. Um, mm-hmm. We're, we're going to probably do it again. So um, awesome. I think, I think it'd be great for um, you to also connect. Cause I actually, a lot of people there like had, like geyser projects and stuff. So I think, I think that was, that was really cool. Yeah. Cool, man. I I think it aligns pretty well with, with the goals of the HRF because like geyser in and of itself is, is such a fantastic way to, to fund a lot of these projects that are just, you know, open source, um, you know, people donating their time to build this stuff. Um, That's, it's one of the ways that they can, hopefully make it work is is using uh tools like geyser so i mean it kind of seems like a natural fit to me but i don't know i'm not in charge Definitely. of the hrf <laughs> no um, we've mick and i um you know we're, we're even we're even talking 
um, about like a potential partnership between HRF and Geyser, which um, I will follow up with on offline. Um, but no, I mean, it's just like, as far as the granting space goes, right? Like Geyser is doing something that's truly unique. Um, I got to be on their board um, for this round of grants. Um, this past round focused on education um, initiatives from uh, all over the, the world and online projects as well. Um, and, you know, say, say there's a, there's a meetup uh, that that's kind of present there. Right. And they just kind of need, you know, money to get lifted off the ground, make a website, get some, you know, pizza, beverages, whatever. Right. Like typically like these people don't need like $25,000, $50,000. Like a lot of the, a lot of the, um, you know, organizations that grant money um, in the space, which there's not many of, uh, they typically do at, at a larger capacity, um, you know, 10000 upwards of $100,000. So I think the concept of micro-granting is, is very special and very important. Um, and, you know, as guys are coined, right? Like just letting the fats flow. Like it's not about, you know, like getting you know, like a Bitcoin or two Bitcoin, right? Like, I mean, just getting a couple million sats um, goes a long way um, and you can easily distribute that among different projects. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the organizations don't have the capacity to do micro grants to that level. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, a collaboration to that extent would be, would be really, really cool. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> I love it. Signing live. <laughs> yeah. i got i i i while i was down there in nashville i got a notification on my phone uh i got a tweet that i i got a little micro grant which was super awesome i was i was pretty stoked about that i think i got like uh like 150 bucks or something which was really cool to see that anybody gave a crap enough to like vote up upvote it but uh yeah it was super awesome what a, what a again what a useful thing for people to get their work in front of People and there's so many awesome and talented people that are submitting projects on there. Um, you know, all of the sats. We need all of the sats showering on on some of those amazing creators. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. there there used to be a time, right? Like, even you know, as someone who like follows projects and vets projects and stuff, there there used to be a time where like you can look and be like, okay, like there's X amount of projects ran by this person. I started here now it's here like you actually like knew all the projects that were going on um and and i felt like they, mm. like yeah like there was more projects that came on but it, it had to be similar uh but even sitting out in on like the the round five of the grants for geyser it was just like so many new projects that like i had no clue um mm -hmm. even existed right so it gave us um some some insight um at hrf as well um to kind of see what these projects are, are doing so yeah thank you thank you again mick for for inviting me on yeah thank you for helping yeah and doing the evaluation and uh, yeah mm -hmm. those thank you for participating man i love it i love it uh well i mean with that i think um mick i should probably uh uh send it your way then and uh do our final rotation and again I'll, i'm gonna queue it up with the same question. Why are you bullish? Take it away. Yeah. So uh, Arsh uh, stole my thunder there, um, <laughs> but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, the so yeah, I, I'm bullish uh, as Arsh said with uh, Bitcoin educators. Um, we just had this this grant round five focus on Bitcoin education in um, in in uh, education Bitcoin communities mm -hmm. and. It, it was exactly as our said, just um, just mind boggling how much is happening uh, I, I, that I, I didn't even know about. And what's really, really interesting is that you see these projects connecting with each other, learning from each other, taking from each other. And I think you have four different communities, for example, for example, using Mi Primes Bitcoin's diploma uh, in their community in Germany, in um, in in a classrooms in the United Kingdom, um, in in African schools like I think uh, African Bitcoiners, 
um, and I think there's a few others. So you see the um, these these kind of Lego pieces being built, like the diploma from Mi Primer Bitcoin, uh, starting to kind of see themselves in other communities, and that's you can basically with that start seeing how this can scale, like mm -hmm. right. Um, you can start seeing how Bitcoin education can can scale because we have this really small but powerful building block that can be replicated and, and, and scaled scaled up. And <clears throat> you see people um, starting these projects from from very from just with an idea. And this is where you know geysers, I why why we started geysers in the first place is because we realize well everyone has ideas. Right, and the the hard part is how do you get it started? How do you take an idea from just being an idea to actually being okay? I'm gonna do it, and it's it's you know, guys, just makes it compresses the 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 the, the challenge and, and and effort of 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 taking that first step, and so um, with that project, and and now we have over a hundred projects on Geyser, um, seventy projects applied for the grant, fifty five won. Um, uh, a grant and 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 the powerful thing of the grant is that it works at these different tiers, right? So it, whatever point that you are in your journey, uh, there is a small grant for you. So the tier three was uh, yeah, 150 dollars uh, one. We had a second for 500 uh, and also one for 2,500 dollars. And um, and everyone could you know could essentially um, kind of ramp up their. Uh, their, their their work and and a lot of it is also just connecting these communities that are uh, as are said all over the world. We had um, is it worth me sharing uh, quickly here? I think I can present. Is it yep. presentation? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think oh, it'll no. pop up for me. Yeah, I don't think I can actually. Do you want me to pull up uh, just like the Geyser Fund page? Oh, the, yeah, that's yeah, that sounds good. Or even just the tweet thread, um, like actually, yeah. If you send if you send the the tweet thread link in the show Perfect. notes or or in the private chat, I'll pull it up for you as well. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So so basically, what you get here is uh, yes. Yeah, so if you can on top right, you can probably see uh, the grants. Oh, there. Perfect. So that's the one. So. So there you have, um, yeah, basically projects from, yeah, well, you got the board, uh, the sponsor, uh, shout out to Blink for mm -hmm. making it happen and uh, some Bitcoin, anonymous Bitcoiners. But then here, yeah, you have these, uh, in Africa, you have an exorbitant number of, of projects that have, um, that have won a grant, so many different communities. Um, and yeah, again, you can start seeing how these are just like the seeds that are being, um, that are being seeded, and um, but you have the same also in Asia, right? We have um, um, again all over. You've got Hong Kong. You've got uh, I think you've got something like forty different countries here represented, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, Europe, South America, and some of these are just people that were like, I want to, I want to make this happen. You know, it's gonna be small. It's gonna, uh, but we want to start having a community space, doing education. And we can just take the open source uh, Mi Primer Bitcoin curriculum and start and start using it. And um, we can just plug into Geyser and start receiving donation from the community. And um, and so yeah, so this Geyser grants ends up being a very powerful thing that works for both starting to kind of uh, get that initial uh, bit of funding, but also more importantly to connect you with the rest of the network of the community, uh, learn from them, um, be inspired by them. And and um, and kind of be part of that learning process. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it ends up being you know a lot of work for us, a lot of operational work. But it's you know um, also there we 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 got a lot of help from uh, Lee, who uh, is uh, helping us organize the, the grants. So that shout out to, to Lee, and um, and yeah, uh, it's it ends up being such an, a powerful way to kind of bring the community together. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to say, but that's kind of the gist of it. Yeah, that's what, a, again, what a great tool. And like when you, when you go in 
to geyser and you you take a look even just w a, aside from the grants just the all of these projects that are so incredible i mean my first bitcoin is is I, I remember chatting with them at i think bitcoin 2022 or maybe it was 21 even um and it wasn't quite a thing yet and to see what it's become uh is is wild but like again just the the ability to go in and choose like oh do you want to maybe look filter by education community culture um again so like just looking at the education stuff here again some of the most funded stuff this this week and you can you know toggle all these settings but it shows you all these great projects that are going on the decouve bitcoin the guys in in france mm -hmm. what they're building is amazing um it's it's such a well-refined um again educational track it's it's awesome to see um there's there's just there's so much going on and uh there's there's again there's anita anita was also down in in nashville and uh and, and man, what an awesome educator she is. Paco was down there. He's, he's crazy. Um, <laughs> but, he is but, definitely. <laughs> but I love kind of him. crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good crazy. Uh, the, yeah. Um, the Me Premier guy, guys were there as well. Um, and it was very cool seeing like how um, a lot of different, it's been translating into so many different languages and stuff now as well. Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. Like there's, there's so much. Um, again, you've got Max DeMarco, uh, amazing filmmaker. Um, I think uh, Julian is on here as well, aka uh, Kinetic Finance, and he's doing really amazing video work. Um, there's just a whole bunch. There's me, yay! <laughs> um, but the, but there's there's so much going on um, that oh, I'm and I'm glad to see Urban Hacker is getting a little bit of funding for his. He's got like a cool retro video game thing to teach you about Bitcoin that he's putting together. Um, but there's yeah, there's there's so much there that you can dive into. And even if you're just browsing through and you want to see kind of you're just you're just curious about what people are, are making and what kind of interesting tools or fun things that you can check out. Just go to geyser.fund and just poke around and you're going to you're going to come across things that you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know anybody's working on something like this. And and there's there's a lot of really cool stuff happening and i i can't recommend checking out this page more because man there's some creative people out there and uh if, if you're a creative person also you should probably get on geyser maybe i should make a tutorial around how to do that oh man we have to do that that's uh yeah we should yeah. do that for sure I'd love yeah to, to I, I think that's maybe that's something next to that we should uh probably do yeah <laughs> great yeah. great idea yeah and I'll, I'll just say that, yeah, you know, right now, Geyser is, you know, uh, the, the, the front page is, you know, just seeing what's there and, and searching. It's it's quite, you know, basic, you know, which just have, helps you find a project or discover. Um, but, but you know, you, 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 in, the, in the next months, you'll see a lot more happening. Uh, mm -hmm. That's um, not just uh, discovering, but really interacting and engaging a lot more. That's, that's cool to hear. Awesome. Um, for now, like if, if somebody wants to start playing around with Geyser, do you do you want to maybe kind of give like a TLDR of of what they need to do to, to get started? Yeah, sounds good. So uh, it's uh, it's really it's really Geyser's built for 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 everyone, right? So if you are uh, a hardcore Bitcoiner and you want to keep full custody of your of your Bitcoin and and uh, and have a non custodial project. <clears throat> you can just plug your node. Um, currently, it's it, it just supports uh, LND uh, and ClearNet. We're still working on on the other options, but um, doing so would be quite easy. Um, in fact, in that case, Geyser will be free to use. We don't charge uh, to any creators that are connecting our node because we want to incentivize that. We want people to um, to 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 use our nodes and 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 and, and uh, reward people that are. Uh, that are helping secure the Bitcoin network. And that's uh, once you do that, you just connect your node uh, or your lightning address. And so you can just uh, plug in your lightning address and then you'll get all the sats received directly into your 
custodial or non-custodial wallet. So, you know, this is, you know, I think 97% of projects right now use uh, Lightning addresses, mm -hmm. which is to say that, you know, not everyone runs a node, mm -hmm. um, but everyone uses Bitcoin, right? So many people can use Bitcoin and leverage Bitcoin and think of all the people and, you know, around the world, right? Um, from the Philippines to India and Nepal that don't have access to crowdfunding, right? That now can use crowdfunding thanks to Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, and we just make it a lot easier for them to quickly get, get set up and have a page. But then, yeah, once you plug in your node, you can you just have a few, uh, say, say a few things about your, you know, the title of your project, the one liner, the description, and um, add also some tags so that you can be searchable. Um, add links, and then you're off to the race. It takes you know one minute to create a project, um, and then you know maybe a few more minutes if you want to add a little bit more texture, and then mm -hmm. you're yeah you're off. It's it's really really quite straightforward and smooth. Uh, the project goes uh, live automatically, mm -hmm. and then we just do some basic uh, due diligence to make sure that it's not like an impersonation, uh, to make sure that it's not um, you know committing fraud or, you know, is, you know, not like uh, endorsing violence or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so Geyser still is, you know, a platform uh, for now mm -hmm. uh, in a sense that it's, you know, we still uh, have a terms and condition and we still have to uh, respect uh, um, uh, the rules. If you are looking for a fully non-custodial experience, it still suggests other options. Mm -hmm. like maybe uh, using Noster or using a BDC pay server. Mm -hmm. um, those are also you know, fantastic options, but Gaza tries to really push forward the, you know, easy to use, you know, leveraging Bitcoin, uh, plug and play kind of solution. Yeah. And um, yeah, but going forward, we, we, yeah, we also have more plans with Noster that I'm happy to discuss more if you like. Oh, that sounds interesting. Huh. <laughs> I might, I might tug on that string. Um, I was just going to say, again, if, if anybody feels hesitant about, you know, diving on there again, like you're saying, you can, you can connect your node or you can just plug in a lightning address. And if you don't have a lightning address, just go like blink is a great, easy onboarding solution for, so the blink wallet, you download it and, and right away they'll give you, uh, your own lightning address. And if you just sign on to geyser and plug that address in, it just looks like an email. That's all you need, and you'll you'll get you'll get the the Sats directly to your wallet. Um, and then I should also say that yes, that's custodial, but it it probably won't be long before we start yeah. to see non custodial oh, options that please. also have Lightning addresses. Oh, can't wait for that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's going to be a huge. That's like that's yeah. like a game changer for everybody, where you can basically download an app and open it up. And then just set a lightning address and and then anybody in the world can send you sats non-custodially via lightning immediately. That's that I feel like is the the next evolution for for Bitcoin, where people can just say, yeah, I just got I've got, uh, you know, and all all the complicated bits are in the background and you don't need to worry about it. You just have a lightning address and all of the channel management and everything is just defers to a, a lightning service provider and and you're you're set that's gonna be great oh man yeah, yeah. Um, times. so i heard mention of noster here are you i don't know what you're at yeah say. So I, I can't say too much mm -hmm. um uh it's part of a of a bigger announcement we're trying to make uh gonna be making next few months mm -hmm. um it's 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 really trying to you know leverage what Nostra provides. We're trying to right. And let me just kind of maybe highlight the problem. All right, the 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 problem right now of platforms like uh, like Geyser, but you know traditional kind of Web two platforms is that their moat is to is to kind of um, you know isol you know bring uh, bring the users in in order to you know monetize mainly through advertisements get the guys is not the case right so mm -hmm. the the problem it all really stems with the problem of, of monetization so the platforms make money through advertising and therefore how you make money is that you bring them to your platform mm -hmm. 
right? Now, Bitcoin solves that, right? Because now with Bitcoin, you can monetize from this activity taking place, um, not just on your platform, right? Because you can, money is now interoperable. So, you know, if a user uses a, a Geyser Lightning address and sends funds from, from Noster, Geyser can still monetize a, a small percentage. So, so that, so, so the whole monetization kind of via, bringing people to your platform isn't as useful, first of all. Second, creators end up suffering a, a lot because they create content on a platform, right? And then they have to send people to that platform for them to consume that content. And so you end up with, in this world of SEOs where you, have, you see this image SEO and you have to click there and go to another website. And, uh, and that just creates a lot of friction for um for the for the viewers of the content for 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 for, for people that are for the communities for, who end up feeling a lot more friction of having to go from one place to another <clears throat> and also secondly just the, the problem of ownership uh you know of, of the data the data ends up uh, that content ends up being basically stuck in that platform and uh, it's not really yours in the first place either and so uh, we think Nasser really solves the the problem of um you know, cross-platform content and uh, content ownership. And so, yeah, and so we're taking some steps in that direction to which I think will really help creators reach their community more mm -hmm. and, um, and get more engagement of the community. So we right now, Geyser is entirely about making it super easy to fund other your creators or, or get funded. But we've done basically zero in terms of enabling um, engagement to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the reason for that is we didn't think it was appropriate yet because it just didn't feel right um, to just, you know, build something the old school way, way where, uh, yeah, just, you know, I mean, right now we have these entries, um, but yeah, we, yeah, we sort of kind of realize that it's, it's different to do so in a platform versus to do so in a protocol level. So, yeah, so expect uh, some big changes, um, but cannot say more than that at the moment. Very interesting. Well, uh, I will be watching. Um, I'll also be watching on Noster to see what pops up and what kind of hints I can find. But uh, yeah, that's that's very exciting. The, by the way, this is also streaming live to Noster. So uh, I'm sure some, there's some Nostriches that are, watching right now and curious about that so that's super awesome um all right well i think uh now comes the time where we we start to begin to round things out uh and what i usually like to do uh near the ends of episodes unless of course ella or Arshi wanted to add anything to what mick was talking about uh, thoughts quick quick things you wanted to touch on I kind of just had two big takeaways from all the great work that you're doing. And I think the first is just that it puts into perspective just how global Bitcoin is and just how much is happening around the world outside of who might be in your local community or what you kind of see in your local area. Um, and then the second is that it's like validation for your hard work. I think from past experience I've had like in kind of a, a funding sponsorship role, like if you don't have anyone to kind of place value on the work you're doing. Maybe you almost self-select out, but what you've created is a way for everyone to receive that validation of the work and really just kind of have that motivation again. So those are just my two, two takeaways. Awesome, awesome. I don't know if Arsh, if you have anything that you wanted to tag on before we round out. Yeah, no, um, I definitely think it's making, you know, the crowdfunding space more interactive. Like typically there's, you know, people people who gets grant get grants from like private organizations. It's typically behind closed doors. Um, I I have a lot of fun going on Geyser and just like donating to a project. And then um, they had this like you guys had this like tweet bot where it was like you know like you know at Arshmalu donated twenty one thousand sats to this project. I'm not sure if that's still a thing, but I remember from like early on days and um, the UX is is um, very simple. So I think as far as like onboarding people um, to donate to projects and to set up their own campaigns, um, this is definitely you know an amazing solution to that. So 
Prop, props to you guys and the, the whole geyser team for sure. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ella. And, and yeah, also definitely props to the, the great team behind uh, behind me, you know, with the guys are really Stelios, uh, Sazal, um, Alejandro, and uh, Travis, and, uh, and Lee. Oh, well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Again, Another, another, I guess, throwing back to my initial reason, another great example of people building cool things. Uh, so love to see it. Um, all right. So I'm going to start rounding out here. What I like to do at the very end is just do a quick round of, if you have anything that you, you didn't get to mention that you want to quickly mention, but more importantly, if you have a recommendation that you'd like people to check out. And when I say recommendation, um, I usually mean, Really anything that you think people could get value out of, whether it be a book, a podcast, a, a video, a, an application, a piece of hardware, uh, general life advice, uh, really anything that you think will provide some value to people watching now or later listening uh, audio only. Um, yeah, please, uh, please let them know. So Ella, I'll, I'll go to you. Any final thoughts, recommendations you might have? Okay, I hope it's okay, but I have three, um, but I'll be quick. So I think the first one, go watch everyone, the Michael Dunworth um, on what Bitcoin did. Just If you just kind of want like your mind to be blown a little bit, just go watch that. Um, second um, is key audience or people in school, any type. Um, there's another good podcast I'd recommend. Um, it's on Bitcoin Fixes This with Jimmy Song and David Perel, I think is how you say the last name. Um, but essentially the TLDL, like too long, didn't listen, um, is don't be so focused on the utility of your curiosity. So in school, you're kind of, okay, this is the subject I need to, like, this is why I'm learning this. This is the utility value of whatever I'm learning. Um, but the takeaway from this is like, just be curious. Don't be so focused on what am I getting out of my curiosity. Um, that's number two. And then number three, and Arsh can expand, is we're launching a Bitcoin student clubs network. Um, so if you're a student watching this or know a student and you want to be connected with a group of students learning Bitcoin, studying about Bitcoin, um, or you have a Bitcoin club and you're also kind of looking for funding, we're going to also be with the network once it gets up and running. Um, so that's a new project. Definitely be on the lookout for more information. But yes, thanks so much, Ben, for having for having me on. That's great. Thank you. And uh, what a great initiative. I think I think again, having um having people that are are you know currently in school uh, go and and start learning about and and hosting meetups and and creating clubs to to learn about Bitcoin is is a fantastic thing. So, um, yeah, that's great. Uh, Arsh, I'll, to I'll toss it to you again. Final thoughts uh, and recommendations, anything you might have? Yeah, um, just to piggyback off of Ella, I mean, there's a lot of people now, uh, especially coming into the space, I'd say in the past like like year or two, um, as far as, you know, like more college and high school students goes, and we're seeing more, you know, Bitcoin clubs and people who are curious about Bitcoin. Um, I know that that definitely wasn't the case, um, you know, a few years ago when uh, I started getting into Bitcoin. So I'm I'm glad that's like ever so changing. Um, so yeah, I mean, like under under generation Bitcoin, we were you know going, um, we, we were looking at clubs and we were looking at colleges and stuff, and you know, thinking about like writing proposals and um and like for like for like independent Bitcoin majors um which which ella actually did to her own school um but instead of dealing with you know all the, all the bureaucracy and like the, the timing and everything um we decided to take a step forward and you know kind of sync with like already existing uh blockchain and, and crypto uh clubs to kind of say hey you know like you should circle back to bitcoin because a lot of a lot of these clubs started um on the foundation of Bitcoin, but as Ella mentioned earlier, Bitcoin is uh, somehow in, in some way old tech now, um, <laughs> which is which is totally not the case. So I think going going to them and offering, um, you know, a community and, and resources where we can be like, hey, like you know, 
start teaching about Bitcoin. Here are some resources. Here's some funding. Um, you know, if your if your club is reading a cool book that you like about Bitcoin, let's we can try to arrange to have that guest speaker come to your class um, and talk to you guys about it. You know, online in person, whatever the case may be. Um, and and you'd be surprised. Like there's there's a lot of um, already existing. Uh, blockchain crypto clubs or clubs that that did exist at one point but they've just kind of uh been been passed down and there's nothing happening there so i think extending the footprint like on on campuses um and even high schools all throughout uh the world is is a very um un- underserved thing right now and there's a lot of opportunity um in that space for sure awesome awesome I love it. Uh, I'll toss it one further down to Mick. And again, any final thoughts, recommendations you want to toss out there? Go ahead. Yeah, I'll just have two recommendations. One is definitely listen to BTC Sessions. Uh, very high signal. Great guy. Great guests. So Thanks, <laughs> definitely that. that. And uh, yeah, and then go to Geyser. Go to Geyser. I'm going to shill it. Um Support your favorite creators. You know, they are the ones that are the true heroes, you know, that are pushing Bitcoin signal forward. Um, and and also, you know, everyone is a creator. Um, it's really about bringing your passions with your with your talents. And everyone has talents and uh, and there will be a demand for um, for that intersection between talents and passions. Um, because the world is big and the internet connects us all and um, and there will be a demand for that very particular niche and um, and then when you do guys it could be a good place to start mm-hmm. so um, yeah so happy to uh, hear your feedback uh, if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me metamic 14 or at geyser.fund but yeah that's me Awesome. Well, guys, um, I want to say thank you to all of you for taking the time, for being here on a a Friday evening, joining me. Um, It's always the best part of my week, getting to hang out with some Bitcoiners and and, and chat about what we're excited about. So uh, again, appreciate all you guys. Um, Are you guys, who's going to be down? Is any, are any of you going to be in LA in a couple of weeks at all? No. Yeah, Ella, you will be? Okay, awesome. Arsh, are you down or no? Uh not not this year. Uh Glad Gladstein will will be there though. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well Ella, shouldn't you be in school? Very- <laughs> <laughs> I know, I am. I know, I know. I know. Thank oh. goodness I have friends in some classes to help me. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, Bitcoin's important. Just have wondering if you were actually in university or <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's that's all part of learning. It's uh, yes. conferences are so critical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ever ever since Bitcoin started, um, you know, being being a role, like we've always been a bad influence dragging um, Ellen to like conferences. Like she's yeah. natural. She, she's going to Africa um, later this year. Uh, so yes. I think it's I think it's it's definitely great. But but yeah, thank thank you again, Ben, for for having thank us. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, no ben. worries. Absolutely. Yeah, thank, thank thanks so for much. being here, and yeah. uh, I'm and I'm I'm sure I will see all of you uh, before long um, at at some event uh, if it's not LA. So <laughs> thank you guys very much. Yeah. Have a great you weekend. Too. You too. Bye. See you guys. Thank you, man. See you guys. Bye. Bye. See you guys. Awesome. And everybody watching, thank you so much for being here. Uh, what a blast! What a what a great group of people. Um, yeah, we're going to uh, be seeing each other. I was saying uh, LA, um, Pacific Bitcoins, just around the corner. It's Man, that's coming up quick. What is it? But two weeks today, it'll be the second day of Pacific Bitcoin. Holy, that's, yeah, that's coming fast. Anyways, uh, that's going to be blast. I'm very excited for that. Um, so yeah, anybody unfamiliar that's uh, in LA. It was a really good event last year. I really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, it was, uh, what was, it was, it was in the midst of the, the FTX collapse. And that was an interesting framing as we were there and, uh, yeah, what a great time, but, uh, high signal, lots of great speakers. So yeah, if you're around, make sure you say hi while you're down there. Uh, if you still need tickets, um, I believe you can use code sessions 
on pacificbitcoin.com and that'll get you like 21% off. Uh, so yeah, anyways. Also, if you're going to be down, I'm doing my workshops. My I've got two workshops going on. I'm doing my tap signer workshop, which is uh, we're going to be learning about a couple different things here. So effectively, what you'll be able to do is you'll learn how to use Nunchuck Wallet on mobile. You'll learn how to set up and use a tap signer, and then you'll learn how to use multiple tap signers to create a multi-sig wallet. So I'm going to be doing that uh, on the Saturday morning after Pacific Bitcoin. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to be running my cold card deep dive. So that's everything like setting up a cold card, using it, uh, doing transactions, um, doing uh, air gap transactions, uh, wiping the entire device and then also uh, restoring it, and then also diving into some of the advanced features. That's a beast of a workshop. It's like four hours long. Uh, so you'll walk out of there knowing a ton about uh, about the cold card. Uh, either way, both of them are happening on October 7th, the Saturday in the morning and the afternoon. Um, and uh, last time I did my workshops in in Miami, I just did the one, but uh, uh, that one totally sold out. So if you want to come, um, get in before they're gone. I think there's there's six left for the multi sig one, and there's five left for the cold cards. So uh, coming quick. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there, and I'm gonna say thank you so much for being here. Uh, of course, please do like, subscribe, share all those things. Super important. They really do help the show. Uh, you can also. Um, hit up the previously mentioned sponsors. They're all down in the show notes. Uh, and then if you really liked what you saw, you can always uh, hit up my website, btcsessions.ca. There's tons of free information there, ways to book me for one-on-one -on -one sessions, all the workshop information. And uh, also if you want to drop a, a, a tip, my Geyser Fund page is there, uh, which we got to talk about a little bit today. Anyways, guys, I'll wrap that there. Um, and, uh, and I'll just say thank you so much for being here. Have a great weekend. And um, I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions. This was your daily session. Hold the Bitcoin.